say my name. I am awake. I am the danger. I am the one who knocks. Welcome, welcome, once again, to Breaking Into Breaking Bad. This is Clifford and Caleb Humphrey. This is Season 4, Episode 4, Bullet Points. Yes, we're back. We take a little bit of a hiatus for the uh, holidays, spend time with some family, before we dive back into some more holidays. But here we are, Breaking Into Breaking Bad. I'm happy to be here. I think, Cabes, you're happy to be here? Oh, love it. Awesome. All right, well, before we get into the title do you want to give us a brief synopsis here sure yeah this one was called bullet points um you could basically say that the the gist of this episode was covering your tracks in in several different ways the main part was skylar preparing to divulge the story that her and walt have concocted Mostly Skyler has concocted about Walt being a addict of gambling and how they're going to kind of cope with um, explaining this story and all the gist of knowing how Walt got into gambling, how he gambles all the whole nine yards with gambling. We also see some close calls with Walt having kind of a one-on-one with Hank and Hank divulges that he is looking into the whole Gail Bedecker story and makes Walt see a video of Gail that he, uh, they found at the scene of the crime. And then Walt gets a little paranoid and starts going after Jesse to cover their tracks. So it was, it was a lot of kind of back and forth with that, but it ends with, Walt trying to find Jesse and uh, we see at the very end, Mike is taking Jesse in his car and they drive off and it ends that way. So you don't really know what's going on, but it was, it was a pretty good one. I'd say. Yeah. Action packed. I, 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 I describe it. Yeah. So the episode's called bullet points. Any thoughts? Uh, I would say based off of Skylar's long list. Of yeah. Things that she wanted to go over to make, to make sure that they covered all their bases. Yeah, and I think so. Does she say that? Or either she says it or Walt says it when they're going through the story. They say we need to be on the same page. We need just to have some bullet points. Yeah, there you go. But but I'm thinking there's got to be more to it than that. That's just kind of boring, like bullet points on a list. So what I thought of, you know, in the intro. The intro is, we'll just go ahead and get into it a little bit. So the intro shows Mike in the back of a truck, like a freezer truck. Oh, he's, yeah. He's like wearing like a big coat thing and he's hiding behind some stuff. And it's a Boyos Hermanos truck and they're driving like, I don't know, through the desert or something. And then then they get pulled over and he somehow knows they're about to get ambushed. And so he kind of ducks down behind something and then some people we don't know who they are just start hosing the truck with with uh, their guns and um i mean there's a lot of rounds that are yeah. sent into that truck and there's one specific that i remember um camera angle where you're sort of seeing from inside the truck and seeing the light come through the bullet holes in the truck and i don't know it just made me think of bullet points uh, in a very, yeah. very literal sense, uh, making their way through the, through the truck there. And of course, you know, Mike being Mike, he shoots his way out, kills the people who were going to ambush him. He gets his ear kind of partly shot off. From what I recall, there's not much explanation. It's one of those we're supposed to, we're left to kind of figure it out, or maybe it's going to be made, made sense of later. I guess it has something to do with the cartel, though. What do you, I don't know. Yeah, it kind of just gave you a little bit, little taste in your mouth for a story you just don't know yet. So you're you're getting little bits and pieces of it. I thought that was pretty well done. Yeah, yeah. 
Okay, so what's the significance of the bullet holes in the truck and the bullet points that uh, Skyler's walking through? Um, I, I don't know. It, it, it means this episode deals on one hand with some, you know, we're, we're moving the story along uh, on one hand, but we're also reminded that there's real violence going on. And, and so those two themes are kind of covering up the story and also just continued violence, kind of a theme, I would yeah. say. So after the intro, the next scene is Skylar laying in bed awake, and it's 3.01 a.m. So that's, that's pretty late or early, depending on your perspective, I guess. And she's clearly nervous and thinking about something, and then she starts writing something down. It becomes clear later that she's thinking of their story, and she's writing down what you know. What do they need to do to cover their tracks to make sure they're very thorough so that they have an answer for every question. And it's Skylar being Skylar, you know, she's, she's, she's going to go very thorough on this and she gets into it maybe more than is necessary. I mean, I'm re- I remember the episode where they celebrate the buying of the car wash and they've got the ba- bottle of champagne and Walt's like, yeah, you know, it's one bottle, you know, but like Skylar's like, just like going all in like, no, you can't have even one bottle of champagne. Like that was a mistake. So here she's, she's going to try and, write a history of of Walt and Skylar so that every T is crossed and I is dotted here. And and critically, that story requires that Walt admit that he uh, has made a bunch of mistakes and he feels ashamed. Yeah, ashamed was the was the key word there. Yeah. She yeah. wanted to uh make the main purpose of his story, which he, you could tell he was just not on board with. Yeah. Right. And so there's, there's something really critical to understand here. I think because there's two things going on. On one hand, there's just the story that they're trying to get people to believe, which is a lie, but they're trying to get people to believe the lie. On the other hand, I think Skylar is also wanting Walt to admit that he's made mistakes that he's the one who's responsible for all the things going on. And so Walt doesn't like that in the fake story, he has to feel ashamed. Why not? It's a fake story, bro. Like she's just coming up with a plausible explanation for how you got this money. And it seemed like a way to do that was to say you had a gambling problem. So just play along, just say you had a gambling problem. And like, you, you know, you wish you hadn't, you know, gambled so much, even though you won a whole lot. Uh, but he doesn't want to play along. Why not? Because he's aware that there's a second layer going on, which is what actually happened. And he says, what actually happened is that I'm providing and I have provided for my family. And I don't feel ashamed for that. I did the right thing. And so I, I can't tell if Skylar's trying to sort of win that argument by getting him to adopt this fake story. But it's clear they can't really separate the two. Right. And Walt ultimately goes along, but he goes along with the story in a way that I think is not very believable. He's like, Oh yes, no son. I, I, I did, a, I did things I'm ashamed of, you know? And, and well, cause it contradicts everything that he's been going from, like going for like the whole, mm-hmm. the whole virtue and value that he was providing right. as a, as a husband and as a father, just nix all of that. And now yeah. everyone is going to be aware of that. He did something out of shame. Yeah. Not out I of remember, courage. I remember the episode where he has Holly and he shows Holly the money that he's stashed in the wall. And he tells her, you know, daddy did that. Daddy got that money. And you, you made the point that she's the only one he's been able to brag to about what he was able to accomplish and highlight. Yeah, I accomplished that. And, and what Skylar's doing here is she's cutting his legs out from under him saying, you don't get to have a story where you did some great thing and you won all this money and you earned it and you achieved it. And, and, and aren't you great? Instead, she's, she wants him. The only way he can get that money is by paying for it with his pride. 
Right. It, it's like she had a, a different agenda. Like, yes, she wanted it to fit the story, but also it's like she wanted that that last punch on I, him. Yeah, I agree. So they do all this at Hank's, at Hank's and Marie's because obviously Hank can't easily leave. So that makes sense. They're doing it there. Uh, but while they're there, Hank shows Walt and Walter Jr. the video of Gail that came about when they were doing the investigation into Gail's murder. Well, and first, just remind- first he shows the minerals, which he is very proud of. Yeah, still don't understand those. Still well, but did you see though? Like once, once Walt kind of took over and showed oh, right. his his knowledge was more superior. Hank just moved on quickly to what you were just about to talk about. But I thought that was that was pretty funny. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, I don't know. The, there's a point there that even in the realm of minerals, we're still in the realm of chemistry, yep. where Walt is king. Yep. And no amount of amateur, you know, armchair press, you know, whatever, yeah. going to read up on minerals is going to is going to be able to reach Walt's level there. Right. So what does he do instead? He goes to the thing that he does well, the thing that only he has access to. No one else can show them that video. Only people who are on the inside, like, like Hank. And so we see the video and we're reminded of just how weird Gale was. Man, that guy was weird. He's almost believably weird, though. You know what I mean? Like, he's so weird. I mean, he's like, it's kind of like a Dwight figure in a way. Yeah, just no friends, just all about no no shame in in the things that he likes and enjoys. Right. Beats, bears. (laughs) <laughs> and you know, you know Battlestar Galactica like whatever the equivalent is like Gale's got he's into that right like just an odd guy um but now now Walt is thinking oh man Hank is on the case here and I think what happens here too is that Hank reveals his obsession with Heisenberg and he tells him well I thought that this guy was going to lead to the big guy you know this guy Heisenberg and I think it's from that point that Walt starts to get nervous because then they go and they sit down to eat dinner and Walt's trying to play the role and it's not working out well. And then he sneaks out, you know, pretending to use the bathroom to go look at the, at the notes that, that he, um, he knows that, that Hank has. And at that point he, he, I think he's scared by what he doesn't know. He doesn't know what Gail has put in those notes. And the and I loved and it was brilliant the way it was dedicated to WW. Yeah. Willy Wonka. Right. I mean, and then it goes to the poem and and Walt is able just elegantly to get Hank to believe that it's dedicated to Walt Whitman and not to Walter White. Did you see uh Walt's face? when uh, Hank was explaining about this Heisenberg character. And he says, I think he said in quote, uh, he cooks the purest meth anyone has ever seen. And for a second, you see a little bit of like <laughs> twink twinkle in his eye or something. Yeah, damn right. It is, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I don't remember that, but I believe it. I believe it. Huh? But he was, he obviously he was very sad because it wasn't him that got to take him down. Right. So. Yeah. Well, so now Walt is, is thinking, I mean, in the same way that he appreciates the purity of the meth, I think he's also now that same part of his brain is engaged to think about, did we pull off a pure murder? Right. You know, and he goes to Jesse, he's like, did you pick up the casing? You know, like, did you pick up the impurity from the scene, you know, that would otherwise it would have been pure. I mean, he's, he's, he's obsessing about it and he knows because like fingerprints could, and eyewitnesses. Right, Jesse, Jesse could have made a mistake that could then cost them. And he knows that Hank is obsessing about this and is not, is, and is going to be relentless. Right. And Jesse is just not in his, a right state of mind right now. So he's not able to really, yeah, Good answer. 
No, there's something seriously wrong with Jesse. Mm -hmm. So we saw the last episode, there's a guy like walking out with his microwave or something and he doesn't, doesn't even like flinch. And then people are destroying his home and he doesn't even care. Here we see someone steals what looks like all of his money, which he's foolishly kept in a duffel bag in his room. Yeah. I mean, I'm surprised it took that long. But didn't even care when he noticed it was gone. And it was didn't just even no, care. no sign of, uh-oh, nothing. Just, all right, well. Right, right. Who, yeah, who's going to buy the dipping sticks with pizza? Right, right. Yeah, yeah, complete apathy, which would lead me to think that he's depressed if he doesn't have any care for anything, up or down. You know, he's not excited about anything. He's not angry about anything. He's just completely apathetic. So then Walt comes to him in this very distressed state and starts harassing him, really, to say, you know, how did you, you know, did you do this? And, and walk play by play every step, you know, what, what did you do? And Jesse finds a way to, um, kind of a funny way to get Walt to back off, you know, by offering money to anybody who will kick Walt out of the house. But he, he just doesn't care. And um, that means he's really dangerous. And that, that we get to that in the end of the episode. Mike obviously knows that Jesse is in a very dangerous place because he doesn't care. Right. Which means... He doesn't care if he goes down, and he doesn't care who goes down with him. So Walt is talking to Saul at one point, and he says, any way you slice it, everyone is in danger. And it made me think of, it seems like just an episode or two ago, when Skylar is asking him if they're in danger, because he's got the black eye, right? And he insists, no one is in danger. So he goes from no one is in danger here to telling Saul, any way you slice it, everyone is in danger. <laughs> Just kind of showing how dire the situation is. Well, it made, it made Saul, Saul kind of freak out, too. He's like, well, even me? Like, what, what, right. what do you mean everyone here? <laughs> yeah, right, 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 right. Yeah. So then Mike, kind of somehow always watching everything, is able to get the money back that was Jesse's is trying to control Jesse and get him to wake up and be careful. And Jesse's showing that he can't be controlled because he doesn't care about anything. And it, it's almost like he has nothing left to live for. I mean, the thing he desired was Jane. And now after the murder, it's the one thing that he fears or, or the one thing that he I don't know, regrets, dislikes. So the one thing he liked was Jane. The one thing he disliked is that he had to do this murder. I, I don't know. Whatever it was, the combination of those two things has made Jesse an empty shell of a person. Yeah, it, it's crazy to think because his main goal from the moment we've met Jesse to, you know, up until recent was just to, you know, make fat stacks. He wanted money. He was always scared because he didn't have money, he didn't have any kind of without money, he has no power, no notoriety. He just wanted to be able to that was his main goal. But now that he has all the money he'll he'll ever need mm. at this moment, he, all, all the things that got him to that point, he hates about himself. Mm. And yeah. he's he's just imploding at this point. Yeah, that's a great that's a great point. Yeah, it reminds us that money is only useful for the things that you can buy with it. In other words, it's a means; it's not an end. And yeah. I think he's coming to realize that when he made money the end, and and now he's got not it, it. There's nothing he can do with it. He can't get happiness with it. So right. he doesn't care if he has it or not at this point. Yeah. He's lost his family. He lost the girl he loved, and now he has to do horrible evil things as part of just staying alive right well and then the the episode ends with mike apparently disappearing jesse or something <laughs> he's driving him 
way out of town and we don't know what's going to happen with him. And Jesse doesn't seem to care. Yeah. And he doesn't have his phone, which freaks out Walt. Yeah. Right. Right. Walt, Walt doesn't know what to think now. Well, I mean, Walt has a habit of breaking into Jesse's home all the time. That's true. He does. But that's when he freaks out the most is when he, he breaks in there, calls it and realizes that Jesse's phone is there. And that's when he goes back into the lab and he's like, where is he? Yeah. Right. He knows. He knows. So, that, yeah. Uh, he's scared too. He he doesn't know what's going on right now. Right. Well, I mean, it's been that way for a while that they didn't know, like at any point, one of them was going to get killed or both of them or. Yeah. Really horrible way to be. So kind of a, kind of a quick episode. Yeah, yeah, it moves right along, you know, it moves right along. All right. Well, thank you everyone for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please like, share, and subscribe. You could always find these episodes on the Apple Podcast and on YouTube. And you could also follow and reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you on Twitter and Patreon at Breaking Into BB. We will see you next time as we break into another episode of Breaking Back. <laughs>